Welcome, this is Majesty Sussex Report. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us. I firmly believe that what has happened and continues to happen to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex has a wider significance and will ultimately produce the biggest impact. Since stepping down from royal duties, the powers to be have done everything possible to silence Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The attacks on them by the British media and their affiliates worldwide have intensified tenfold. Each story becomes more brazen, more unbelievable, yet there remain a flock of people who believe every word, keeping the level of scrutiny and security for the Sussexes at an all-time high. Whether Harry and Meghan spoke their truth or not, the British royal family and the media, with their mutually beneficial relationship, are determined to make an example of them. The goal is clear, to show that they cannot succeed or strive outside the control of the firm. The knowledge Harry and Meghan took with them, the stories they can still tell, threaten to be the beginning of the end for both the media empire and expose the dirty truth of the British monarchy. That same monarchy that's willing to protect and even befriend alleged SA and pedos. Our community, through fierce and relentless content creation and Squaddy's relentless vigilance, challenges the UK narrative on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. We strive to expose the truth and serve as an unexpected force against the UK imperialistic and sick media, controlled by a few billionaires whose riches come from keeping the British people blind to the truth and ignorant of their own suppression. The cardinal sin for many, including royal experts and commentators, is that Harry told his truth and the abuse he suffered in the royal family. If he had just maintained the secrets, things might have been better. They not so subtly imply. This obsession to stay quiet, keep the secrets, explain why people like Jimmy Savile, SA children for six decades, and no one said a word. In an article by the Daily Beast from 2017, Nico Haynes wrote, The extraordinary scale of SA perpetrated against children by British VIPs was laid bare on Wednesday when officials disclosed that they were investigating allegations against 76 politicians and almost 250 persons of public prominence. Harry and Meghan have cracked that stiff upper lip, broken the silence, and that, according to King Charles III, allegedly, is unforgivable, a cardinal sin. In today's turbulent world, it often feels as though the very fabric of society is unraveling. Big corporations are now classified as people, yielding more rights than individuals. Governments appear to prioritize the wealth of the 1% over the needs of so many. Social media, once a beacon of connection has morphed into a profit-driven machine 
that fosters division and isolation. Despite having countless ways to connect, we have never been more lonely. COVID-19 pandemic exacerbated this isolation, transforming us into people we barely recognize. Across the globe, nations commit atrocities, wiping out generations of people, caging people, and killing women and children indiscriminately. The irony doesn't escape us that in democratic societies, industrialized nations, they punish their citizens for objecting to such killings. Once victims, now monsters. Artificial intelligence is quickly becoming a tool for the haves, leaving the have-nots further marginalized. People who call themselves Christians worship at the feet of a man convicted on multiple counts, including SA, yet they blindly follow, ignoring biblical warnings about false prophets. It's a world where grievances seem to matter more than the truth, making it hard for many to even wake up in the morning. But amidst this chaos, a quiet movement led by change makers is emerging, offering hope and inspiring action. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, Kamala Harris and Francia Marquez are among these prominent figures leading this movement. Their stories exemplify resilience, courage, and a commitment to justice, inspiring people worldwide to demand a better world. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, their journey has been fraught with challenges. Since stepping down from their royal duties, they have faced relentless attacks from the British media and their global affiliates. These attacks have intensified becoming increasingly brazen and unbelievable. Despite this, Harry and Meghan have remained steadfast in their mission to seek justice and hold the media accountable for its actions. Harry's legal battles against tabloid giant like Murdoch Media Empire highlight his determination to expose the illegal operations that have destroyed countless lives. Despite being, some may say disowned, by his family and facing threats from the media and unknown entities, Harry continues to fight for justice. His efforts have not only brought attention to the unethical practices of the media, but have also inspired others to stand up against misinformation and exploitation. The success of the Invictus Games, founded by Prince Harry, is a testament to his resilience and commitment to making a positive impact. The Games celebrate the strength and determination of wounded, injured, and sick servicemen and women, providing them with a platform to showcase their abilities and inspire others. Kamala Harris, the first black South Asian woman to be the presumptive Democratic nominee for president, represents another beacon of hope. Her journey to the highest echelons of American politics has been marked by perseverance and a commitment to justice. Harris's nomination is a historic milestone, challenging the status quo and inspiring countless individuals, particularly women and minorities to pursue their dreams. Her candidacy against a convicted criminal underscores the stark contrast between leaders who seek to unite and uplift and those who strive on division and hate. Harris's 
presence on the political stage serves as a reminder that change is possible and that the voices of the marginalized can and will be heard. Francia Marquez, the first Afro-Colombian vice president of Colombia, embodies the spirit of resilience and activism as a displaced black woman, minor, feminist, and social leader, Marquez has faced numerous challenges. Her election marks a significant milestone in Colombia's history, representing not only the arrival of an Afro-descendant woman in a position of power, but also the triumph of the left in a traditionally conservative country. Marquez advocacy for the rights of marginalized communities and her commitment to social justice has made her a symbol of hope and change for many. Her reception in Plaza de Bolívar, where attendees greeted her with enthusiasm and respect, highlights the impact of her work and the support she has garnered. Marquez represents a break from the past and a new direction for Colombia, and a powerful message to the world. The rise of these change makers is not an isolated phenomenon. Across the globe, people are waking up and taking to the streets to demand justice and equality. They are pushing back against misinformation and lies challenging the narratives perpetuated by powerful entities. This collective action is a testament to the power of unity and the potential for positive change. And guess what, my friend? You are, you are an active part of this movement, standing up for what is right defending the Sussexes and challenging misinformation against that powerful giant. Yes, you are. You are a change maker. And I thank you for that. We are the chosen people to live in these times. We are here. We've been chosen. We've been chosen to help usher in a better world, not for few, but for all of us. In a world that often seems to be spiraling out of control, the emergence of leaders like Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, Kamala Harris, and Francia Marquez offers a glimmer of hope. Their courage, resilience, and commitment to justice inspire us to believe that a better world is possible. As we navigate these challenging times, let us draw strength from their example and join the movement for change. Together we can rise above the chaos and create a future where justice, equality, and compassion prevails. Yes, we can. I know we can. Hello, and thank you for being here. If you are new around this space, do consider subscribing if you enjoyed the content today. And... Turn the notification bell on so you will know every time we upload an episode or a video. Um, everyone else who's already my wonderful, beautiful subscribers and members, do like, do comment, and do share. It's a command. No, it's not. <laughs> but um, thank you for liking, thank you for commenting, and thank you for sharing. It all helps, um, I guess, the algorithm um so what did you think um did you like today's episode did you learn anything um do you agree with 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 my with my sort of 
point that was trying to take um, in regards to agents of change. And I will say that the podcast that you just experienced was not the podcast you would have experienced yesterday. So first also, you know, apologies for um, not being able to upload that stuff yesterday the youtube god or whatever it is or mischievous person or ai or robot whatever decided to just give me a hard time and i think it targets the channel every two months or something where even the songs that i've purchased and i've told you folks this purchasing stuff all of a sudden it will say um you know copyright infringement and i think well it's been four months and now you think upright infringement like it actually a few weeks no I think it was last week like one of the podcasts that I did on Endgame like way back all of a sudden it's like these two songs are are copyright infringement and I was like it's right there like I have the license for it so and lately because it, it did this again with um, one of the other episodes it's just saying that I have copyright infringement stuff with the videos and even though I'm doing exactly the same thing I've done prior now all of a sudden no I can't do that anymore so I I, 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 I don't know I am of the, the um, decision that I think every two months every three months to just target the channel and whatever it is what it is and um, we we carry on so once again, apologies for yesterday, but I think you would have received a very different um, episode. The one yesterday was a little bit more, I shouldn't say a little, it was a lot more. It was a lot angrier and the tone was 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 quite, I think, aggressive. And this actually, as I started to do it um, to mid, mid-morning to redo the whole, the whole thing, I... I started to take a different tone and I yeah I, I, I hope you like how it how it turned out I'm, I feel better about this this sort of tone and the things that I you know brought up for us to think about the other thing too do you feel any different in regards to because I know the last the last little while I've been feeling this a lot like just very heavy and very sort of I want to mean a while I mean a while <laughs> like even um, you know like even during COVID I, I just felt like 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 the world was just heading into a place that well it's not like we were heading we we're already kind of there of of where nothing that should make sense is making sense where you know a criminal is being elevated to 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 sort of go back into the highest office and the people who who proclaim to be christians that should be reading the 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 teachings of 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 christ are the ones who are doing absolutely everything opposite to what christ would actually do you know like like one of the biggest democracies and they're taking books away from schools and uh, it's just odd and weird and you're looking at you know I read Margaret Atwood um, Handmaid's Tale in high school and I I kept thinking as I read the book I kept thinking gosh thank goodness like this society doesn't exist and I hope hopefully it will never exist and there was an interview with Margaret Atwood where she said everything in the book exist or has existed like she didn't invent anything right like we have done as as a species we have done this and that blew my mind because i kept thinking why do we do this to each other but also it kind of reinforces my whole idea that like men are certain men are toxic and the interesting thing also is like why do we give power to narcissistic toxic people like i i don't understand why we do 
I, I, I'll see, for example, even in in politics, I'm always like, be honest, be honest, be honest. And I'll see a candidate come out and be honest about things and they just plummet. While the other candidate is obviously lying to us, like blatant lies. And they're soaring in the polls and I'm going, what, what, why, why? <laughs> Ah, oh, the human brain, the human condition. I guess I'll never fully understand it. And that's a good thing, I guess. So what what do you think? Um, do you feel that there is a sort of momentum starting to happen? For me, it 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 sort of because we are we are concentrated basically looking at the Sussexes and what what Harry and Megan are doing and and the court case in the UK and you know it's sort of you know the the elections happened in in the UK then you know certain things started to like come out about the Mordocks um uh, and Harry wanted to to kind of um annex certain things the judge said no but I was like okay okay so he has more information and that judgment that came came down that was quite in his favor everything that the judge said so i started to see glimpse of like these little things happening here or there right and in colombia like no one thought like a leftist um um government was going to be elected because they've never like never <laughs> right i was in colombia um a few weeks before the elections and some of the people that I spoke with like they were like nervously saying yes I, I, I I'm gonna vote for the leftist party for the first time but I hope I don't regret it because they had gotten so tired of the same 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 right and yes I have been to, to Colombia I love it there I absolutely love it I love Cartagena um, I feel very much at home in Cartagena and um, I've never been to Cali I like Bogota. Um, Bo- Bogota is sort of like there's parts of it that is really great, and there's parts of it that is like uh, okay. But it's a beautiful city, and there's so much to do, and you can. It, it's just it's just great. I I, I love the country. I was craving. Um, sort of being in that environment and my um my 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 uncle who um recently retired and is i think he's either you know i thought he had bought a place but my mom said he he's building a little house or something um and he had said to me he suggested to me he said why don't you go to cartagena and i went and i just felt so wonderful and at home and and it was great i love it there so i think megan and harry are going to have a great time um colombia is wonderful the food is fantastic um the people are great so and what i'm going to do because i wanted to include it in this in this episode too but then i thought let's just keep it to the time that i want to keep it at so tomorrow i'll sort of um, the episode for tomorrow, hopefully, knock on wood, is going to be about my experiences there, um, my experience in Bogota, in Cartagena, the people, and I'll also talk and touch a little bit on race relations in in Colombia and in general in South America, because we have a very complicated. Um, I don't know how to say it, but but in regards to race and 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 what the um, what the Spaniards did and 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 how some of that legacy of how one sees oneself still exists today. So hopefully, <laughs> I will not offend anyone. But what my experiences are are my experiences. I'll talk, you know, honestly to to it. And I will also look at the situation from an academic research sort of um, point of view to give you a broader kind of thing. But if you folks have any questions that you want to ask me about um, Cartagena or Bogota 
or Colombian general, please leave the comment in the um, leave, leave the note in the comment section, and I will try and um, answer it tomorrow. So tomorrow, what I'll do is do that sort of thing, and then leave more time to answer comments and to you know for us to have that kind of conversation. I'm so excited that Megan and Harry are going to Colombia, and that they they're actually going there prior to the um the the first conference on um and i don't have the name in front of me what's the official name but it's sort of like violence against um ch of children and you know the interview that harry and megan are going to be doing on sunday is to talk about um that whole uh, well the continuation of bringing awareness to the dangers of the internet and social media and you know kids teenagers that are unliving themselves because of all the pressure and all the stuff that is happening that uh, okay i'm not gonna bring this down i am signing off <laughs> love you folks i'm so excited uh, that our faves are going to Colombia. So excited about that. Excited about the interview this Sunday. And um, just, just, just great. Absolutely great. Well, as always, I, 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 I love you folks. Um, thank you for everything. Take care. And we'll chat again. Bye.